a sophomore and a super senior, an unlikely pair of friends, time, an even more unlikely choice of topic. So how did we end up here? Well, this is the number of days ago that I should have graduated. And this is the number of days left till my graduation. So you might ask, what happened? And um, it's funny that you call me a super senior. Right? It sounds pretty cool. Like, it would come with superpowers or something. This is the definition of super senior in our university. And uh, uh, the road to reaching this title wasn't as easy as you might think. Um, two years ago, I failed a course. A course called Dynamics and Vibrations, to be exact. And ever since then, it felt like my life is coming to an end. When I first failed the course, I felt that I, uh, I would be starting a job a year later than all my friends. And uh, basically, I would be frowned upon by the industry as someone who couldn't finish engineering in four years. It's safe to say that I was exaggerating a bit. Yeah, maybe a bit. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, all my fears, whether through personal or societal influence, had one theme in common. And that theme was time. So, uh, so you've heard it a million times. Time is precious, time is valuable, time is money. Time, time, time. And if you've come across any of these sentiments before, it's more than likely that they've been followed by a tragic story of loss, terminal illness, near-death experience. Dad and I were talking about this a couple weeks ago, and we stopped to wonder if maybe this was why so many people didn't really understand the value of time. Because in reality, and fortunately, most of us can't really relate to those stories. And most of us uh, don't have any formal education or a PhD in the study of time or any kind of education in philosophy. But you see, the thing is, we don't have to. Regular people, like the two university students up here right now, can go about discovering the value of time and taking time for personal development, for growth, for life. Life has given each and every one of us the gift of time. How you go about discovering it, well, that can differ dramatically. While our experiences in discovering the value of time may not seem necessarily life-changing at first, it's the change in perspective that accompanied them that really was. So our perspective on time and how we deal with it affects almost every situation that comes up in our lives. When I first realized that I was going to be an undergraduate student for an extra year, uh, I felt like everything was over. Until one day, when I made the decision that it was time for a change. And after countless YouTube motivational videos and countless sleepless nights, I decided that I would come out of this hole of misery only to find myself there again and again, time and time again. Finally, a year after I had been delayed, I realized that the law of conservation of energy, as many of you might know, applies to me just as much as it does to a spring. So I guess you finally started to understand that yes. dynamics were <laughs> So I decided to make the conscious decision to stop wasting valuable time and energy on something that I had no control over and instead channel it into something that I could use to better myself. So what did I do, you might ask? So I decided to start my own company. Sounds crazy, right? And it definitely sounded crazy to me when he told me about it. But knowing Saad, if he finds something he's passionate about, he'll go to any extent to make sure that happens. So if he had an idea for a software that he thinks is missing from the healthcare industry, you can bet your bottom dollar he's going to make it happen. And he'll pursue it all the way, even if someone tells him it's unrealistic. So I pursued it all the way to Italy. I found myself on a flight to Torino to participate in the European Innovation Academy, where I was working with like-minded individuals who were motivated to make an impact. We had our first taste of starting a company, and it led to many good things since then. Ever since then, my life took a, took a positive turn, and I've been able to come out of the old hole of misery that I found myself in after being delayed by a year. So, I guess you could say that Saad unintentionally stumbled upon the value of time. But it doesn't always have to be that way. You can seek it out, too. So, I've always been a bit of an overachiever. Um, Maybe a bit. I've always been a bit of an overachiever. 
Um, <laughs> I always found myself biting off a little bit more than I could chew and paying the price of it later. When I was in 10th grade, I was thinking a lot about university and how I'd have to, <laughs> and how I'd have to go about being a competitive applicant. So before I knew it, I was dedicating almost all of my time to studies. And whatever little time remained, I was investing in extracurriculars. IB courses were coming up in the next two years, and the courses I was enrolled in were demanding to say the least. <laughs> so the courses I was going to be enrolled in were demanding to say the least. Now I thought, this is a great use of my time. I'm really using my time to its fullest. But the thing is, I wasn't. Yet anyone around me at that point in my life would have told you that I was managing my time so well. But I knew deep down that taking time and investing that in my personal growth and my personal development was so much better for me than what we've defined as time management. Absolutely, I completely agree with that. And a lot of times, us as students and young professionals, we tend to overwhelm ourselves with studies and often ignore real opportunities in the process. So, does this sound healthy, enjoyable, or even productive to anyone? Not at all. And at a time when I had so much on my plate academically, I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to learn to play guitar. And that's what I did. So soon enough, I bought a cheap, basic guitar, and I dragged it to my room, propped my laptop onto my bed, opened up YouTube, and I wrote basic first guitar lesson. So I was no good at it, and it hurt my fingers at first. But it made me happy. And it was a real way for me to de-stress and decompress. Now, this led me to think, why does, it, why does it matter so much if I invested five hours of my time rather than six into studying for a physics test that I was already ready for? It doesn't really make that much of a difference. Well, you can't expect to pick up a guitar without putting something else down. And everyone around me might have called it poor time management or something of that sort. But in reality, I knew that investing my time into something that could better me physically and mentally is better overall for me than managing time the way I was managing it. That leads us to ask the question, why do people, and especially young people these days, take so much pride in being busy? It's almost like we wear it as a badge of honor around our necks. If we're so busy being busy all the time, we'll, we won't be good at doing anything but being busy. And we often don't realize what we're doing it for and who we're doing it for. So a real turning point in my life was when I realized that I am the best judge of understanding what, I'm should, what I should be doing and when I should be doing it. And that's because there's an unmistakable feeling of contentment when you are doing something that you consider worthwhile to yourself. Plus, in addition to changing our perspectives, our experiences with time also had a great impact on just how, how we see things. And it also came with other benefits, kind of like a valuable byproduct for our STEM professionals in the audience, or like a happy accident. So I was able to make some great friends when I stopped focusing on, when I stopped seeing these things like as a, I found failure to just be another word for an opportunity for learning and for growth, rather than being something daunting that we hide from. And so this led me to, to invest my time in learning guitar, and then this further led me to start a music organization at Texas A&M. And so overall, my time revelation was a win for the Aggies. And in my case, it's easy enough for us to say these things to an audience, because in an ideal world, everyone has an infinite amount of time. Now, I'm graduating in 33 days, and obviously I'm looking for employment opportunities and possibly postgraduate study opportunities. But I've made it a personal goal for myself to have certain other interests. For example, this is a map or the shape of my country, Pakistan. Pakistan has many, many issues these days. And I think that young people who have had a privileged education especially in engineering, are, the, are best suited to solving these problems. This is one of my goals, and I'm willing to take this step and not think that time is a limiting factor for any goals that I have. Our goals involving time also don't have to be so large. We can also focus on some short-term or long-term goals in order to affect, in order to avoid getting overwhelmed or stressed out. So for example, even 10th grade me that was so obsessed with accomplishing things wouldn't have, ima <laughs> wouldn't have imagined that I would be up here today a couple years from then. But that's because at that point, I wasn't really 
investing my time in reflecting and in having these ideas. I didn't even have ideas worth sharing, as Ted would call it. So we can invest in our larger goals or in our smaller goals and just work towards them, rather than focusing on these short-term things and small deadlines. Now, what I'm not saying is that we, should, that we should focus on everything else and leave our schools, our studies and our academics. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that we should be having the discussion about how much of our time we're investing in only one dimension of ourselves, because otherwise we think we're just wasting time, which isn't true. Playing guitar for me, for example, was a great way for me to de-stress and decompress, as well as make new friends. So yes, maybe investing your time in yourself is the best possible investment you can make. Absolutely. And maybe being a super senior and spending five years studying engineering had more benefits than it had drawbacks. It did. And maybe you should fail a course too. Abs what? The <laughs> benefits are endless when you realize the value of time. So. This could lead you to ask the question, do you control time or does it control you? Well, in our experience, our relationship with time doesn't have to be so binary. Now, it's really easy for us to say that time is working against you. But with the exception of extreme cases, this is rarely ever true. We leave you with this. Life has given each and every one of us the gift of time. Now, how you go about discovering that gift and investing it in your personal life and in your personal relationships is what makes it truly meaningful. Thank you.